So just another quick video about Razer DK2023 and debugging your hardware. Because down here I have an old Denon MC3000 controller that I'm trying to use. And my problem is right now that I don't get any audio through it. So if I play the music up here, I can't hear anything. So that's a problem. So what can I do about it? Well, first thing to test is your audio config. Because that's what decides where the audio goes from the software. And as you can see, it's currently set to be the internal sound card, which can play through the laptop speakers if they were turned on, which are not. So I won't get any audio because there was supposed to be a box here saying MT3000. So the controller hasn't been detected. So naturally it can't put music through it. Okay, so that's an easy, easy thing to find out. Now you need to figure out why it hasn't been detected. Could be a driver, could be anything, right? In my case, it's very simple. It's because I've turned it off just for this little video. So let me turn it on. Now I actually get a little pop-up saying that it's been connected right here. But let's just see you haven't figured it out. Another tell is that it's full of lights, right? So now it's been, now it's been detected. Uh, now it's, no, at least it's been turned on. So let me just try playing the song again. And I still get no audio. So why is that? Well. I'm going to go back into settings. Look here. Now you see I do have my MC3000 button now. But it has been selected. It's still on the computer audio, which is clear down here in the outputs. So these buttons up here are actually just to change these down here. So let me just click this MC3000 because that's what I want to use. And it changes down here. And I click apply. And now when I play the track down here, I can actually hear the audio. So there's two, two checks and fixes, if you will. Uh, if there's no audio through your output, through your um, hardware, in this case, a controller. So the next thing I want to talk about is actually uh, when just some things aren't working. Like, for instance, on this setup, when I play the track, I use the crossfader. Nothing happens. It doesn't affect the sound. Hmm. Next test then. Back into the settings, but now we're going to go into the mapper because there's a very important and and pretty unknown field inside the mapper, which is this one over here. This one. And that's actually just gonna point it out. This little thing, which is often empty when you come in, uh, or it has. Uh, set the last few commands that has been received because that's actually the input little input field where you can see what MIDI controls Virtual D-Day is receiving. So let me, I'm just going to move the crossfader back and forth. And you can see I'm clearly getting the crossfader input. And it goes from 0 to 0 0.50 in the middle all the way over to 1.0 to the right. So it doesn't look like anything is wrong with the actual physical crossfader. So what could be the problem then? Because this seems to work fine. Well, let me go into settings then. Options here, and then I go into crossfader. And that's set to full for crossfader curve, so that's a good thing, because that should definitely be easy to hear that it would turn on and turn off when you move it all the way across and just play one deck. But then the next one, the crossfader disabled is actually set to yes. So someone didn't want to use the crossfader at some point with the setup. Uh, so that's probably why I disabled it. So I'm going to set the disabled setting here to no. I can hit the field. Just a second. There we go. I'm going to try again. And now the crossfader works. So that's an easy fix, that was simply a setting. There was no, nothing wrong with the hardware. And we could see that because of the little input field that I mentioned. Okay, next little thing is, if I play the track and I move the pitch slider up, the tempo declines just like the you would expect. But if I move it in the other direction, Nothing happens. So slowing it down works fine. 
but speeding it up doesn't work. Huh, how can I figure out what's wrong here? Well, I can go back. Let me just set it to the middle again. Well, I can go back in here in the settings and I can uh, go back to the mapper and the input field here. And then I can try moving uh, the cross fader up to slow it down. Oh, sorry, the pitch fader. And you can see it goes from 0 0.50 down to 0 0.0. So that works. That's what I would expect from a, from a slider. When I move it in the other direction, right now I'm moving it up all the way down, as you can see down here. When I do that slowly, you can see it does a little bit 1.55, 1.54, but it never gets consistently bigger. Not like when I turn it down like now. The other way, that doesn't do that. So this is actually a physical problem. This fader over here is broken. Or it may be dirty, I may be able to clean it and stuff like that. Or it may re need replacement. But this is actually a physical problem on the, on the hardware. There's no way I can fix that in Visual DJ. But it's still great information. Now I know what to, to do next. I can try some cleaner. Uh, or I can send it to service. I can do something like that. But it's not a Visual DJ problem. It's an actual hardware problem. So this little field up here again helped me figure that out. So that's cool, I think. So it's just a little bit of intro about how you can uh, debug your setup if you don't have any audio, uh, if some of the buttons or faders doesn't seem to work or do what they're supposed to, then this is the way to go to debug some of these things.